Well, joining us uh, now, Acting U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Director Ken Cuccinelli. Ken, great to have you with us. Uh, you're you very, you. you're very much in focus now uh, in the <laughs> national consciousness. Uh, let, let's start with DACA. Uh, yeah. You heard Shannon Bream uh, and uh, the, the Chief Justice, uh, his uh, head-scratching sort of uh, uh, point there uh, that you don't have to unwind what is illegal, uh, that that's not incumbent upon the high court. I, I guess they live in a loftier level than uh, mere mortals. Well, uh, I, I agree with a lot of what Shannon said. I, frankly, am a lot more optimistic. And as the director of USCIS, in many ways, I'm the client here in this case right. for the government lawyers because we courts have ordered us to maintain this program until the court case is over. I came out of the hearing today um, optimistic, candidly. Uh, I agree with Shannon that it's sometimes hard to parse the tea leaves. But um, I would go even farther than the Chief Justice Near the end of the argument, Justice Breyer was citing former Justice Vortes and saying, you know, you all, meaning the plaintiffs, have essentially admitted the Trump administration can wind down DACA. They can shut it down. You've all agreed to that. There is no dispute of that. You just say they didn't do it the right way. So why should we play ping pong with the agency? Meaning why should we just send it back when we're going to be back here again instead of deal with it right now? And they could not have been happy to have heard that challenge coming from Justice Breyer, of all people. Right. I, 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 one of the, the liberal, uh, most liberal justices on the court. Uh, it, it, it's fascinating to see this, uh, particularly as we're looking at these uh, new uh, reports uh, from your department on, uh, and the president, by the way, obviously looking at these reports and talking about who are these so-called dreamers. Right. Uh, I would like to put up that, uh, if we may have that full screen to just show what the number. This, these are DACA recipients with arrest records out of more than 700,000. Uh, we're talking about 53,000 uh, of them with arrest records. Uh, it, it, that's, uh, that's stunning stuff. Uh, your thoughts about what we're learning about who these folks are uh, and, and this idea that they're all, you know, uh, minors with, uh, you know, simple dreams and, and, and innocent as uh, driven snow. Well, and of course, like so many other groups of people, you take anyone this large, that's tens of thousands of people committing crimes that are mm -hmm. that any American would think are serious. So that is a factor here. And I get asked, well, what happens if you all win? What happens to the DACA recipients? Well, what happens is the Trump administration gets to actually wind down this program. And that means that these people who are all here illegally, as President Obama himself acknowledged, uh, get put into the pool um, with all of the other folks here illegally. And the folks you identify, Lou, mm -hmm. with criminal records mm -hmm. become priorities for removal. People with criminal records are going to continue the, being a priority for this administration. And, and the others, I presume, get in line with anyone else who is here Correct. to apply for citizenship. Well, uh, that's a little difficult to do when you're here acknowledgedly mm -hmm. illegally. Right. Um, there, there are ways that can happen, but they're more the exception than the rule. Right. So, uh, you know, you saw two years ago that there was an attempt at a congressional solution, and that, yeah. that fell apart. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens here. I'm anxious as a lawyer to see us win this thing. I think it's important to see these kinds of limits put on presidential authority. And I work for President Trump, yeah. but I believe the office of the president shouldn't be able to just sign a memo the way President Obama did uh, to essentially create new law. Right. This is a this is a very sad state of, hey. of place to be constitutionally speaking. And President Trump, thankfully, has been trying to fix it. And like so many other things he tries to fix, the courts often get in the way. Yeah. And today I hope we saw almost the last chapter of finishing out um, this this illegal DACA program. It, it'll be interesting to see uh, uh, you know, Shannon Bream earlier pointing out that uh, this coming uh, all coming to a head right in the midst of a very important uh, election uh, and also giving just Chief Justice Roberts the opportunity to demonstrate what he said before that there are no Trump <laughs> judges and there are no uh, uh, Bush justices uh, or Clinton or uh, Obama justices. They're just justices and judges. Uh, do you buy that, Ken, by the way, as we say goodnight? Oh, 
I, not as purely as he said it. Um, I think they all view themselves that way. But, you know, we also have a, an earlier case to measure against the parents' version, the DAPA case, where yeah. presumably the chief justice was in the, the group of four that uh, voted to uphold the Fifth Circuit's outcome that found that illegal. And it's very similar right. uh, legally to DACA. So yeah. we sort of expect the same outcome again. But now you've added Gorsuch and Kavanaugh to the bench. So right. uh, that... that will get us to at least, I hope, 5-4 and hopefully more. And we'll all be uh, counting uh, votes right up until Indeed they we are. Will. Uh, we're presented with a decision. Ken Coach and Ali, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Good uh, to be with you.